Eat it up, John. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, I am now uh, calling to order the April regular monthly meeting of the EDC. The agenda, just to, to review it quickly, uh, we'll see if there's any additions or deletions. We'll welcome our new EDC member, Greta. Get ready for your speech. Uh, we will take citizen comments on items that aren't on the agenda as we usually do. Um, approval of the minutes, the new business, we have a new housing applicant and then old business. Some of these things will be on the agenda, uh, perhaps not all, but we will definitely discuss the mill school grant application, uh, the, the new grant follow-up process and the marketing work plan. Um, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Uh, if you're remote and your picture is not on the, if you don't have your camera on, um, you'll need to speak up or put your camera on because we can't we can't uh, see the people that are not on the. John, if they raise their hand, I'll let you know. Yeah, please raise your hand if you. Uh, but seeing no additions or deletions to the agenda, um, Greta Calabrese was appointed by the select board about a week or two weeks ago and is our newest member. So welcome, Greta, and she has a what a forty-five minute presentation about herself. Can you <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, hello, everyone. So I'm Greta Calabrese. I live here in Woodstock with my husband, Mike, and our two young children. And I was born and raised in Rutland, Vermont, and moved up here about a year ago, a little more, to be closer to my family. And before that, we were in Boston. My professional history is mostly in sales and marketing and hospitality. And I'm excited to be here. Welcome. Fantastic. Welcome. Welcome. Um, all right, citizen comments, and for those of you that aren't regular attendees, um, what we usually do is we, we time permitting, uh, um, we allow, we encourage citizen comments during the time when we're discussing the issue that the comments are related to, um, so that it's sort of more relevant. But if there are comments right now that are <laughs> about things that are not on the agenda, uh, please raise your hand or anyone in the room. Are there any- Please raise your hand. All right, hearing no citizen comments. Approval of the minutes from March 2nd, as we we have been adhering technically to the revised law because we post the videos of our meetings very quickly within a day or two after the meeting. But I don't think, well, I don't have the minutes from March 2nd. They were not put on the website. Nikki, you, you may have sent them to me. You don't have to tell me, but if, so it may be my fault. But in any event, we're not going to approve the minutes from March 2nd, or I think we're one month behind. But we, what we have, however, we are meeting our legal obligation because the videos of all of our meetings are, are online. Um, okay, new business. We're starting, we have another unit that we would like to incent to create an accessory dwelling unit. Trina, and you have the right to share, so go ahead. Okay. Oh, I have to stop sharing it. Do you see me or see the uh, Ann and Sean Byrne? It's coming. Yeah. yeah. We do now. Okay, awesome. Okay, so uh, we have a new, uh, well, it's not a new applicant. They actually applied last year. Uh, the application is just moving forward now um, due to delay with the contractor um, who's injured and wasn't able to begin work until now. Uh, the application for Anna and Sean Byrne has been reviewed by the housing working group and actually the housing fund committee group. We reviewed this and we did recommend it uh, to be forwarded on to the EDC. <clears throat> it's an existing ADU um, and it needs partial construction and some permit work in order to get it code ready and ready for rental. Uh, there, if you just out of curiosity, so you can see in the photos I have here, the uh, brown garage right there to the right of it, there's a pathway and a door in the back of that. And that's where the studio apartment is. Um, and in order to make it rent ready, they need to add a kitchen and a shower. There is a bathroom, just no shower. Um, and a few other things like uh, smoke alarms, carbon monoxide testers, things like that. David Green was over there and has informed them of what they need to do. Um, and I'm just gonna scroll down. Ooh, I'm a little crazy, hold on. Um, so you can see the pictures here. There's the bathroom. You can see that it needs a uh, shower.
This is the corner where they're gonna put a, a small kitchenette. Um, this is a view of the entire room and the bathrooms in that back corner there. So it's a nice little studio apartment. Um, they are requesting uh, the $10,000 grant for the ADU workforce rental um, program that we have. And then they have agreed also to rent to a local worker, a qualified tenant, as we've been calling them, for a three-year term once it's completed and they can start renting. Do you have any questions? The rent requirements, the rent levels meet our, you know, meet all the requirements that we set. Yes, yes. Um, they meet all of our eligibility requirements as far as the amount they need to rent it for. And as far as uh, water and septic, uh, they have enough capacity, things like that. Are there any questions? No, can we do a motion to... Uh... Recommend for approval. And if you take away the question mark, that becomes the motion. Motion to recommend for approval, ten thousand dollar. I said. And there's yeah. a seconded by Patrick. Is there any further discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Just, just a, Sorry, Patrick. Go ahead. Just as a fun side note, I almost bought that house. <laughs> I, I yeah, know. I remember you telling me that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would, that, that that space was going to be my office. <laughs> that would have been perfect. <laughs> oh, been. I, I do have, it's not a question because I'm already like I, I on this. I just, uh, more of a statement question <laughs> to Trina. This sure. is kind of a perfect example of something that can be, you know, the 10,000 may cover what they need, correct? I mean, it's not a portion right. of it. This is actually a really beautiful example of like, hey guys, you can you can get this done for 10. So I think- right. Really nice. They may be doing some additional work um, as well, like putting in a new heat uh, or like a, a, a heat pump, I believe they were looking at doing. Um, awesome. So they would, you know, enhance the heat that's in there and allow for air conditioning. So um, I know at the time we were talking about it, they were also interested in the VHIP state program. So, I mean, definitely between the two, um, yeah. they should have enough to get it rent ready. Illustration, yeah. if there's some way that we could if they're open to promoting, you know what I mean? I just think that this is a really- Oh, great... yes. Yeah, I, I think so. I agree with you moving forward this year, some of the folks that have received the grants um, and I, I think they're open to tell their story. So I'll, I'll be sure to get that out there somewhere, whether it's a newspaper or in the meetings uh -huh. or listserv, something like that. Yeah, Tesh is coming <laughs> along really nicely too. You know, I mean- it's Oh my gosh, yes, yeah. And she, hers is a build from scratch. So that ADU project is looking really good. She's got new windows in already. And I think uh, uh, the framing is all done. And um, it'll be ready this summer, I'm sure. Trina, can you remind us before we finish this, can you just remind us the number of units that we've now approved for ADUs and for rental incentive program? Um, so. Or Jill, if you know those numbers off the top of your head. Let's see here. <clears throat> I've got them somewhere. So I think ADU. This the third, isn't this the third one? This is the third ADU. Um, so we had three from last year that applied. Um, two of them had completed agreements. This is the third one that's finally at the point where they want to actually complete the agreement and move forward. And how many are there any in the pipeline? Is that third one from last year that wasn't yet approved? Is that still in the pipeline? Recording in oh. progress. The the one we just approved, it's the last one from uh, last, yeah, last year. Last year. Got it. Right, okay. right. And I do, I, I will say that I do have uh, some um, new interests in ADUs and- um, Sorry, hold on one second. I apologize. But... That's right, just turn your volume. Actually, you have to get off the microphone or we're gonna create an echo either way. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So and I don't want to steal the future thunder, but uh, we do have some interest and hope to have some other new applicants uh, for next month's meeting. So new, new applicants. Great. So it's Great. exciting. Yeah. Good stuff, Trina. I'm turning it off. Go, hold on. All right. I apologize if the, uh, the keyboard is not functioning, so I'm just turning it off. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to put the spotlight on you. Exactly. Sorry, guys. Okay. Any other uh, questions or did you get that, okay. John? So yeah. we're approved, John? Yeah. Oh, sorry, we haven't voted yet. Oh, no, we did vote. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a little disheveled. Yes, the motion is approved. Thank you very much, Housing Working Group.
Thank you. Thank you. I, um, John, I did have a uh, another thing on the agenda, but I wasn't sure if you wanted me to do that now or we're going to wait till later. Uh, no, we can do it now, but I thought that this, just remind me what it is. I thought we didn't need to bring it in front of the EDC, but go ahead. I think it's pretty straightforward, if I remember. Okay. I don't sure. Um, I'll share my screen on that, if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I need to give you permission. Give me access again, if you took me, took it away. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Perfect. Okay. So, and the last time we met with the EDC, we proposed several programs and the enhancements. One of them was the rental incentive program. So as a reminder, um, we uh, were looking to make some enhancements to that program because out of the, I believe it was five slots, we only filled two um, applicants last year. So one of the things that has come up several times were to, I'm, I'm going to cover these. Can you see my screen? Yep. Yeah. Okay. In the proposal we spoke uh, to earlier this year, we wanted to extend the program to include owners or properties close to Woodstock, which we still have a benefit because the worker then has to work in Woodstock. Um, and then we were looking at changing the incentive amounts um, to incentivize getting more occupants and uh, units with multiple bedrooms. And then also looking at reviewing the existing lease periods. So we've done that now, and I just wanted to pass that by you because there's a nominal change in the funds, and I wanted to make sure that we were okay to proceed. Well, sorry, just to be clear, that the uh, the, the the change in the uh, I was under the impression that the change in the funds had to do with um, six month versus twelve month period. Is that a different issue? The uh, that's the home share program. So we, okay, I sorry. took that. Um, this is something, agenda. yeah, right. brand new. We, yeah, sorry, John, I've got a lot of things going uh, on. So, uh, so right, apologize well, if I, right, yeah. I, I, Can I, let me just interrupt then. I, I don't think, we don't have these materials. We didn't get them in advance. And uh, maybe that's my fault, but they're not posted yet. They're not posted yet to the website either. The, okay, the first, yeah. The first discussion that we had was, um, was sort of a routine standard. We've looked, we've done exactly what we've done in the past. We looked at the thing and it's completely vetted by you guys. If you can just take a couple of minutes and explain it so we're comfortable, then we can discuss it or vote on it here. But otherwise I, I am a little hesitant to vote on something that we, at least I don't understand at all. So I'm not saying it's a bad idea. So is this yeah. something that can be easily explained? Yes. Uh, yes. I, Trina, I can you pull so. your screen up just a little just so it's a little bigger. Yes, sir. Let's see. Okay. How's that? That's great. So, okay, I'll try to be brief. Our proposing enhancements, we want to change our location to include these other towns that are highlighted in yellow. They're all the abutting towns. And this would also match uh, what we're doing um, for the home share program, just creating some consistency. Um, however, the caveat is if you live in one of these other towns, then the worker has to work in Woodstock. So we still get a benefit from the funds. And this is for the rental incentive. We've had some folks in the surrounding towns that are interested in joining this, but we haven't been able to do so. We also are changing up the funds so that it's uh, <clears throat> the occupancy. We changed up our grid here so that we're including occupancy. If you recall, the rental incentives we approved last year, uh, three bedroom homes, and then they ended up having one tenant move in. So we'd like to give a little incentive to have more tenants and change this up a bit. So those numbers reflect that. The other change is adding six month lease. The six month lease is something that several employers have been uh, wanting in terms of what they've been calling seasonal workers. It might assist with that and puts us a little bit uh, more in competition with short-term rentals um, instead of having a one-year lease. And then lastly, um, if someone has one tenant in a one, two, or three bedroom, they'll get this amount. Uh, I'm sorry, if they have two tenants here and one of them is, or both of them are qualified workers were getting sent with an additional $200 uh, 
on top of the other lease amounts there. <clears throat> Point being our goal is to get local workers and maximize the capacity of some of these rentals. So the, so the number of tenants is not the same as the number of local workers. Correct. So for four or more tenants, we would be giving, if a family, if one local worker with a family in a, as part of a family of four signed mm -hmm. a two year lease, we would be giving them a $10,000 incentive. We would, we would be giving the, the owner a $10,000 incentive. Correct. The family with one worker, if they both work, then you'll get another $200. Now this is this is an increase because last year um, the, the current program is seven thousand dollars for a two year lease with none of these other caveats. So just to be clear, you said the family, but I but, but it's the owner who gets the incentive. Right. Oh, I said family. No, I just want to make sure it's we're not so, we're not paying the tenants. So no the the landlord. This is for the, the landlord. The landlord. I'm the sorry, property. not the owner. The yeah. landlord. Right, right. We're incentivizing them to have uh, a, a. Yeah, I, I understand. It's okay. It's, it's, okay. So, yes. so the main change is that we used to give an incentive depending on the number of bedrooms in the house. Now we want to change the program. So we give an incentive based on how many people you're going to rent to. So actually, the column rental unit could be eliminated because it's really not relevant in other words if someone wants to put two tenants into a three bedroom or or or, or four yeah. tenants into a two bedroom mm -hmm. they would still get the four tenant rate is that correct i, I guess yeah i guess that's true right jill i mean uh, really. except you can't have we wouldn't allow four tenants in a studio or a one bedroom right that would go against rental fair uh, rental housing guidelines in general so you do need that fire kind of permit sense. two people per bedroom is the deal are, are there any so, questions, questions or? So oh, sorry, the main thing ahead. i'm sorry john the main thing I, why we wanted to mention this too is not because i i don't know that you really care how we get into some of these details with this but i think you do care if the amount of money that we're doing is, is impacted so if we're going to a max of 10,000 uh, 10, now, and in the prior year, it was 7,000, basically the impact overall, I've done a little short thing here on the second page. <clears throat> I can get my scroll to work. Let's see here. Sorry, guys. Okay. So you see here, we had the dollar amounts it's changed. What we have currently would give us three new work uh, forced rental homes for two years. With the increase in the rate, we're gonna bring that down to two with the funds we have for two years. If, if we yeah. ever rent to a, a larger group. Correct. Are there, so, all right, thank you. Are there any questions, Larry? Yeah. Um, how how difficult will it be for you if we postpone this discussion till next time? I I I feel a little bit overwhelmed, and I'm I do have some questions that may be easily answered about expanding this to adjacent towns. Um, so you you've all so Larry, you've already yeah. agreed to go to adjacent towns. Yeah, we've already talked about that in our. Mm -hmm. But that, I mean, I can we can talk about okay. it more. No, I guess I'm my goal, and, and it may and, only and, be me. It may only be me that's with, okay. uh, feels that So way. It, we'd encourage you to ask your questions tonight because there is one house that we would like to move forward with. So it and to delay it by four weeks could have consequences. Well, uh, not so my goal was to have this done. Excuse me. So basically, the out, using the the outer town, so long as they're the worker works in Woodstock, whether it's Correct. Bridgewater or or Queech or whatever, uh, you know, as long as the worker works in Woodstock, then they would be approved. Correct. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I, I, I my, have a question. Of, so my my only thing is that the I just wish that the doc I I I do download the documents and I it's possible I didn't read this. I know I read like four of them. But I just I don't remember getting this. Did we get this? If we got no. this, no. No. I don't not. think it's a, I don't think it's appropriate to 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 review that's things. That's fine. Now. 
yeah. without I guess, having uh, time to. Okay. That's fine. There should be a procedure on that that we should we should yeah. try to follow unless it's an emergency. So I think if it's an emergency, yeah. that's something. Uh, but we that we just mm -hmm. we should get things ahead of time at least at least a day. Yeah, I agree. I I, I don't I, I agree with that. I would say there's not an emergency, but uh, the timing of our meetings has been a bit of a challenge because we meet uh, once a month on this, and if we uh, we can wait till May, but anybody who's looking to get seasonal workers for the six month mm -hmm. term or something is looking probably to rent in May or June for six months. So, uh, I mean, we put some things at risk. So, yeah. So what is your concern? Can we can we understand I mean, that so we can answer that for the future? Well, I think that I, I actually, I, well, sorry. And, Larry's, I have some concerns also. I think that the. Larry, do you want to say what your concern is first? And I'll say what mine are, and then I think. Trina, can you scroll back, please? I I just don't, I don't even want to be put in the position of expressing concerns. I I just this is a lot, and you know if everybody else feels comfortable with it, I'll go along with it. I just it uh, I'm I guess I'm not smart yeah. enough to 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 understand everything and digest it and vote positively for it. So it's it's uh, up I, everybody if everybody else way. feels it. It's fine. We'll wait to May. Uh, well. Yeah. So to Jill's point about questions that you can anticipate and so forth at the next thing, I, I, the the, um, the the very large incentives for the number of people and the much smaller incremental incentives for the number of qualified workers, qualified tenants as opposed to tenants, um, injects a social policy into this, which is a social policy that I support, but which is not the purpose of the EDC. So I, I now I don't know what the family makeup of local workers is, but I, I would I would if we could if this since this is since this is going to reduce the number of bedrooms, uh, it seems like uh, sorry the number of units and therefore possibly the number of qualified tenants. I'd like to have an understanding of what the employers need in other words are they saying you know we can't hire anyone because we can't find any three bedrooms or, or are we trying to encourage families to come here which is a very good thing to do but not the edc's I mean, but, but, but john but john EDC's. just I, i've been dealing with this Queechy new hire we're hiring a new chef and executive mm -hmm. culinary director i've been on it for four months and I can tell you, I'm hearing a lot about the 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 J ones and all this stuff. But what my concern is, as a landlord myself, I'm like, if one person comes, in, and I have to think about it. That's why I think I just need time to digest. I don't have my reading glasses on. These are my other glasses. Like this is a lot of yellow. Doesn't work on my screen for me. But but what I think is like, oh, I'm gonna hold out. Like seasonal workers are coming. I'm gonna hold out because Johnny is a one person, and maybe there'll be Frank that comes tomorrow that has, you know, a partner or a child. And I'm going to make another 500 bucks. I mean, this is how this is, it's a business. This is how landlords yeah. think. It's not, you know. So I'm not. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, so but I don't really want to. I don't really want to. I don't want to have to decide it right now. You know, okay. it's just right, right. a lot. So let's let's just for the discussion. Let's just give them the questions that we want. We're not going to get the. They're going to have time right. to consider it, and we'll have time to read and review the document, Marion. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I was I was just going to say because I. It, haven't been able to join that subcommittee in the last meeting, but I'm familiar with the conversation that led to this. So I was just going to respond to the talk. Oh, okay. But I can hold that. Uh, all right. Let, let's just have an integral discussion where we can give answers to, to these different things, if that's all right. Okay. All right. So we will put this first on the agenda for, for the next meeting. Yeah. Um, if this is the document, Trina, Jill, just let me know. We can distribute this document. Um, Would it be helpful? <clears throat> I guess uh, I. I come to these meetings and sometimes I do a recap on this one page document or do you have a preference? Do you want to see the entire, like the two or three page program description? So you're seeing everything. I mean, I, I'm trying to help minimize the review, but also give you enough information that it's not overkill. I, I, uh, I think, I think what I, I'll give you my personal answer. I like to have a summary and the detail and then I can choose. <laughs> Okay. I'll, okay, I'll do both. Put the summary first. Okay, that sounds good, and I can abbreviate this then. Okay, yeah. Let me, let me send you new documents, and we'll do that. All right. All that right. Sounds good.
And Trina, just, just to ask one, one, one last question. The, the reason you're doing this is because of that house that it was a three bedroom and only one person went in it. There's so, uh, multiple reasons, but yes, that was one. Both of the rental uh, applicants last year, the landlords, have one person living in three bedroom homes. So that causes some concern when we feel that there's an opportunity to maximize families. the rental space. Right. And then the other reason was we keep hearing the need to have rentals for seasonal workers. And yep. so the six month lease speaks to a seasonal period. Um, so it's addressing that need that's come up in the past year. And then we thought, well, if we're doing this to get more occupants to maximize the rental space, we could also maximize the intent of having multiple workers in the home. Mm -hmm. But to Todd's point, maybe this is incenting something that we don't want to as long as there's one local worker and a family, like you said. So a little, um, that's a little bit more background. And then just to reassure you, we have been working with a lawyer and this meets all the fair housing criteria. Yeah. Yes, right. it's, it's not our, a suspect. It's our choice as to what we do. It's not a, it's not a. Right. Yes, okay. the attorney's okay. looking it over too. So it's not a suspect classification or anything. We're, we're trying to keep everything on uh, okay. legal. All right. Thank you. Okay, Thank thanks you. guys. Appreciate Thank it. You. Um, all right, the next, um, can you stop sharing, Trina? Yes. There you go. All right, great. Thank you. All right, the next item on the agenda, just to go back for a second. Oh, so let me share my screen. Well, I, we don't need to put the agenda up. The next item is the, the mill school grant application. Um, I just want to um, introduce this topic. Um, uh, the, at the, and, and a little bit of history and a, and a little bit of updating. At the last meeting, we reviewed the mill school application. I believe the details of it are largely or entirely the same if there's any been any changes to the we have the document is is on the website and you've all gotten it but um but if there are any changes caroline we'll we'll ask you to you know if you would like to give a quick update if anything has changed um at the last meeting we did not make a decision but we informally indicated that um that there were two that there was really one major question that we wanted to understand uh, and we talked about some requirements of the grant that would uh, that fit the circumstances and were similar to the to the kind of thinking that we made when we made our first set of grants to the four original child care providers in December. Um, and those two issues th that those informal discussions that we had were number one is to confirm the level of demand. And I've sent around and posted on the website uh, the analysis of demand. Uh, and the second, and I'll come back to that. And the second was. Um, to just restate the requirements for the grant that we had discussed, not decided on, but informally we were in agreement, which were twofold, although they overlap. Uh, one was that the grant is contingent, or there were three actually. One was that the grant would be contingent on getting a license. The second was that the grant would be contingent on the hiring of, of an executive director who had the qualifications needed to run the facility as defined by the license. So those two really are similar. Uh, requirements. And the third was a, 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 a one third, one third, one third funding mechanism whereby, since there's mm -hmm. 17 units of capacity, we would fund one third of it. The middle school reached was serving six kids, one third when they were serving 12, and then one third, the, the final third when they reached capacity at 17. Um, those were informal, this, those were the informal discussions we had. Since then, sorry, throughout this process, I should say, including at the beginning, there, there have been other issues that, that don't relate to the state's determination that this is a, that, uh, whether a facility is qualified to offer childcare or not, and whether we felt that there's sufficient demand to make sure that we're not funding an oversupply, which basically ruined the economics for all the childcare providers. Um, the data now shows very clearly that there is clear demand for these 17 spaces. By, we basically can, can 
confirm that there are at least 50, there are families that representing at least 50 children ages under three who will not be served by the expansion in capacity. Um, and I, Larry and Todd and I believe that this number, which is the child care working group, believe that this number is, if it's an error, it's too low, that there are likely to be more than just 50. That's three times the capacity that's coming online. So that's the first criteria. In my view, that criteria has been met. We can have a discussion about it. The requirements, I haven't heard any suggestions that they change and so forth. Since the last meeting, or really since December, there has also, in parallel with these, what I'll call sort of clear guidelines for whether or not we give a grant, and really the guidelines that we followed when we gave the first grants, they were all licensed, and we tried to figure out whether there was sufficient demand. We concluded they were licensed and there was sufficient demand, that therefore they're qualified to do it, and we implemented the same requirements of a sort of step-by-step -step funding mechanism. They already had directors that met the state requirements and so forth. So we're really following that same process. Since then, and, and from the beginning, there's also been a community discussion. There's obviously been a disagreement here between some of the providers. Um, I realize these are about, this, these are issues that relate to kids. People take them, you know, it's very important. Um, and, and there's been back and forth, um, including the, include, some of that, some of that uh, discussion has taken place in the press. Over the last two years, some of it has taken place in these meetings for attribution. Some of them, some of these comments have been made anonymously in a letter that the EDC received and is posted on our website and, and the EDC members have received. All of those issues that were discussed, if they don't relate to whether or not there's sufficient demand or whether or not our requirements for the loan in terms of licensing and so forth, if they don't relate to that, they don't really relate to our decision. Uh, our, our decision is based, I believe, and, and I, I, by the way, I, I'm putting this forward because I've talked to most EDC members and all of the ones I talked to agreed with this point. So what I would like to do first is just confirm to, to ask the EDC members if anyone objects to us to continue on that basis, which is to make our, our funding decision on the basis of whether or not the state will license this group and whether they have the appropriate according to the state staffing and whether or not we think that there's demand. Let me just ask if there's anyone who wants to talk about that, about how we're gonna make this decision. Marianne. Just the, the only other criteria we did look at with the others was also whether this was like a sustainable. Oh yeah, correct. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, and th that's a good point. And, um, and the mill school has given us you know, a P&L that, that does shown that that so I think that we we had previously I think looked at that and concluded that so it's a good point so is there anyone on the EDC who is who is not comfortable continuing to use those criteria for our decision okay then what I'd like to do is open it uh, up for discussion um, but and I'd like to say that that because these are our criteria there are two sort of implications well two implications for that one is that by making this grant, we are not endorsing. We 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 were not endorsing any of the four childcare providers before, other than to say we believe that they have capacity and that they are qualified to provide childcare. And by making a decision tonight, we are not taking sides between. We're not endorsing the mill school. We're not criticizing the mill school. We're not doing the same for Rainbow or any other group. We're just simply deciding whether they're qualified to offer childcare, and are they will they have a sustainable operation and um you know and can we put in guidelines for performance that 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 are reasonable and, and does the state say that they're you know, say that they're qualified so so i just want to be clear that we're not that's not th those issues which are taking place in the community are taking place they're unfortunate um you know I, and i will just make a personal comment i've talked to people on both sides of those issues i think Mostly what people want is to have these issues not discussed in public. And if they do have to be dealt with, let's just deal with them privately. We can't control that. And, but it's just an observation from someone who has not really involved um, is that I think that there is actually 
a way to come to pretty quick common agreement that let's deal with these things privately rather than have them done out in public. And I, I know that a number of participants have expressed that desire. So hopefully you'll all come to that. But that really has nothing to do with EDC and nothing to do with what we're talking about tonight. So in that context, yeah, that, that's how we'll make the decision. Yeah, yeah, that's how we'll make the decision. Uh, and I would hope that all the comments will be focused on those two parts of our decision. Um, well, is it is is the economic sustain three part? I guess are the economic sustainable? Um, are they qualified? Meaning, will they get a license? And, and that's up to them. And we will only give the grant if they are. And is there sufficient demand? Todd, um, Todd first, and then Tom. Yeah, Todd, yeah John. Ahead. I mean, we've had a lot of discussion on this, and I I think you really really said it incredibly well. Um, and I, I completely agree. I said, do I know a lot of the members in ECI spoke to about it? But I, I, I do want to just remind everybody as we go through the presentation that the charge for this working group was to expand child care capacity in Woodstock, Vermont. Um, we've worked on that. We've been doing that. We continue to do that. Um, personal beliefs have to be set aside because it doesn't help a family with a child that can't find care. What, what can't be set aside is quality. Um, accountability, sustainability, and the other metrics we've set and you spoke about. So not to beat a dead horse, but I think that it's a good thing that there's community discussion about um, the different providers and what they might offer, uh, their tone and service. The way it's being presented, I'm no stranger to presenting things in an awful way. So hopefully they can learn from some of my mistakes and do a better job of it in the future. But I, I just want to say that that in looking at this, it's we do need to set personal opinions on side and understand that different strokes for different folks, different vibes um, in one facility might be better or worse for folks in another. And so I'm excited to hear about this additional expansion, especially since um, when you and, and Larry forced more surveys, um, I thought it was, uh, why are we doing this? But I'm so glad you did it because A, it's accountability for us, but B, it just also reiterated um even more so than i than i had in the back of my mind that that this project this pro um uh, this problem persists and the more successful we're going to be at it as a town and community the problem actually will potentially continue to grow because i think i mentioned to you john that people will choose to come to woodstock because they know they can get the care that they'll need to raise their family and be successful in their careers and home life so I hope, again, everyone does listen with an open mind, and I do hope that directly me speaking to the other providers that uh, you understand that we're here for the children. We know you are, too. So uh, I do think that John's advice should be uh, heeded, and, and I hope that they do so. Thank you. All right. Thanks. I'm going to call on Tom, but then, Carolyn, I'm going to ask you if I don't know that we need to go through the presentation again, but I would like to ask you if there's anything you want to update and so forth. And I can put it up on the screen if you'd like. I mean, we've been through it twice. So yeah. if there, you can just highlight what the changes are if, if you'd like to do that. Or just but let me just I said I would call on Tom. So Tom, go yeah. ahead and then Caroline. Well, thanks, John. I, I, I just want to speak, um, you know, while maintaining an objectivity um on how much of this should be part of the public discussion I, and I, when i say this i'm referencing the the differences between the different providers in the area um uh and i want to editorialize about that just a wee bit and just to say that as a member as a responsible member of the media i would never bring issues to public attention that are raised in an anonymous unsigned letter um and, and, you know, I was sort of troubled to see that letter that you distributed in the packet um, simply being signed by concerned parents of Woodstock, uh, particularly given the allegations that were raised. And so I'm, I'm really pleased to hear that um, everyone here tonight, um, led by you, seems to be putting aside whatever those um, uh, individual differences are and and focusing on the bigger picture of addressing the yeah. the shortage of child care open so good for you okay thank you and I, I by the way as a person as the person to whom the letter was addressed only on behalf of the edc i had the choice of not sharing it or of sharing it and then making the comments that i made and i chose Absolutely. the latter i Absolutely. felt that that was the, the more but, complete uh, way to handle it without I mean, we get anonymous tips and anonymous allegations and anonymous letters all the time and 
um, you know, if, if someone doesn't have the the fortitude or the willingness to put their name on something, we just dismiss it yeah. out of hand. So. Understood. Okay, thank yeah. you. Uh, Carolyn, do you want to, um, and maybe come up here and, and, and or just turn the microphone over there towards Caroline a little bit. Um, are there any things that you want to, <laughs> um, things you want to update us on? Yeah, well, since we last met, we were waiting on the approval of our bridge loan, so that was approved, so that we can actually pay for it before we get the grant funding. Um, so we should close on that next week. And then, uh, is there anything else I'm missing? Um, we, we conditional use approval, but I think we had already had that last meeting. And then we, um, our check for the fire department for our construction uh, permit was just cash. So that's in process. So. Okay. All right, Doc. Uh, does, do EDC members, before I call on other comments and so forth, do EDC members have questions uh, for Caroline or, or for Larry or Todd or I, you know, in the analysis of the hand or, or the, the assertions that I made about, you know, what the facts are now? Just EDC members first. Any, any questions or comments? None here. Larry, De Deborah, I can't, I think Deborah is online you just have to speak up and michael is, is on too i can't see you so if you do want to say something John, yeah, just, oh Matt, sorry Matt. My, my, yeah no i'm fine you're okay all right fine marion just just a quick comment for anybody who wasn't here at the last meeting we did you know we have gone through this i just want to make it clear that we've gone through the presentation we've gone through yeah. the, the details of this a couple times twice yeah yeah just saying that for people you who know at said, this meeting yeah you're fine thank reiterate. You. yes thank you yeah. for reiterating are there any other questions for Caroline? I feel like she's standing up holding that baby. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, wait, I, I, I don't want to stop the questions, but I want to, at least if there are none, I want to give her a chance to sit down. Uh, all right. Are there any other comments then about this um, about this issue? Anyone in the room? Are there any comments from folks online? I, mean, I I'd like to. Can I express support, or is that not allowed at this moment? Oh, you have to. <laughs> I, I just I, I'm I I'm very impressed with um uh with how this committee came up with the solution uh to make this work, and I'm also very uh, I'm happy that you got that loan, which which uh really allows for this to happen as well. I just I think it's really well done. I'm excited to see what happens. Anyway, I just wanted to say that. All right. Are there any other comments or questions? No hands are raised, John. All right. Well, just so the, the, because because of the complexity of this, I'll make this motion. Then I move that the EDC grant ninety four thousand six hundred and seventy nine dollars and twenty cents to the mill school with the following three requirements. The first is that the mill school receive a license from the state to operate a childcare facility for kids under three. The second is that the mill school hire an executive director who meets the qualifications of the state. And the third is that the funding will be distributed when uh, the in in three tranches of one third of that amount apiece. Actually, that number doesn't divide evenly by three. Maybe it does. Um, one third when they're serving six kids, one serving when they're serving twelve, and one when they're serving seventeen. One the final third when they're serving seventeen. It, it's be, have I left anything? EDC members have I or Larry in particular have I left anything out? Okay, that's the motion. Is there a second? Second. All right, motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Any further discussion, I should say. Are there any EDC members who are not on camera? I don't think so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are not. Okay, all in favor? Say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Congratulations. Thank you for providing child care service. And just again, on a personal level, I hope, I know 
all of you that are involved in childcare are well-intentioned. And I hope that you can either work out your disagreements or if you can't, then discuss them more privately if possible. It's good for everybody. And I'm directing that to everyone, not just any one party. So, okay, great. Congratulations, thanks for all that work. Okay, um, you're allowed to get up. It's not rude to get up and leave after you're, you've got kids to take care of. Welcome to, you're welcome to stay, but. Thank you. Okay, um, we have at least two more, two more items, discussion of the new grant follow-up process and discussion of the marketing work plan. Um, Deborah, I do not have any documents available. Do you, how, how should have you it. use? I could um, show it. It's, it's actually listed in the, in the uh, last meeting. line, but I have it up on my desk as well, if you want me to just share it. Yeah, hold on one second. Let me, um, let me get it. <laughs> okay, Deborah, go ahead. You can share. Uh, we go. Um, so the goal of this is, uh, you know, there's a number of grants that have, um, specific um, asks to it, as well as we want to get more data um, in the end and really be able to understand where the money went and how it was spent and also have some data that will help us move forward. Um, the first things that are, are above right here, this is just some, this isn't part of, part of it, but it explains, you know, um, how we'll move forward. So I think you all have gotten this or have seen it because it's been on for about a month and a half now. Um, and so really I'm going to move down to here where it just, it's very, you know, we want to keep it very simple, you know, at the top, what we're talking about is if there's any specific, um, uh, requirements that there's a place for them to, uh, put that information and for me to follow up on that. Um, and here's, uh, the data that we were looking for. Um, again, it's, uh, anybody over 5,000. Um, and as it gets granted. So once they get above 5,000, then we will be uh, seeking them um, every three months to find out what's going on. So questions for grantees, uh, specific requirements uh, for grants. And by the way, I, um, I think there are some things from the past that we need to go back last year and say, okay, what happened to that? You know, is there a plaque? Do we have images? Who are your sponsors? Things like that. Um, and I'll definitely go back and, and get that material for us, uh, make sure those things have happened. How have you acknowledged the EDC funding to date? Give us an, examples. Um, that would be great. Uh, how, how have funds granted been used to date? What is the Im impact if you're able to give us numbers? Um, we didn't speak about demographics, but that's something we can discuss. Uh, I do think it's helpful for us as a town to know those things, but I didn't list it here until uh, we had a discussion about it. But I think demographics um, would be helpful to us. Uh, give us images as you go along, uh, attach reviews if that's applicable. And I think a self-assessment's helpful as well, especially for people who may be coming back again to have an understanding of what were the key things that this grant um, actually did for you and what are your challenges and you know where is you know the improvement as you move forward. So um, would love to get people's uh, opinions on this as well as either additional lines or uh, takeaways or whatever. So um, Patrick, I see you first. I don't see anybody else. Yep, uh, okay, my question is, can you slide up to the top for just a second? Yeah. Okay, right there. Uh, why? Uh, I understand the the five thousand dollar number on one hand, but uh, why? What would be the the? What would people under five thousand dollars need to do to confirm that things have happened? Do we? Is there going to be a process for that? Or are we only looking at five thousand and more? Uh, well, um, that's know. a good question. I think in general, if it's five, the reason we were doing 5,000 is because anything above 5,000, it seems to be significantly above so that you can kind of say, okay, every three months uh, and under 5,000, I personally feel that, you know, doing end of year on a $5,000 grant, as opposed to every 
uh, you right. know. Oh, no, no, I agree. I agree with that. Makes sense. So yeah, I, there would be a follow up after the full, after the year for anything under five thousand is the five. Yeah, you just didn't have that in here, and, that, yeah. and that's really. So that's, that's why. I'm, that's why yeah. I was asking. I agree. It doesn't need to be three months, but it would be nice to know. Yeah. No, annually, yeah. I think it needs to be done. Yeah. yeah. With all the same things, the photos. I'll, and the I'll add that in. Thank you. That's that was my intention. I, I will make sure it's in writing. Okay. And then yep. one other question is. What do you mean by demographics? You know, everyone has a different definition of that. So what's your definition of demographics? Um, the impact. So under the impact, you know, how many people did it impact? Male, gotcha. female, okay. uh, race, creed, color, that kind of thing. Yeah. So gotcha. just gotcha. Uh, also, since we've had some question about, you know, with the advertising, I think it would also be helpful to, if we can get demographics about income levels and things like that uh, for attendees, et cetera, I think that would be helpful. Can we get that or not? You know, are people willing to fill out those survey forms? Some things that- I, I, to told, I totally get it now. I wasn't quite sure before what you meant, but now I get it. Thank you. Yep. Other comments or questions? Larry? Yeah, maybe this is covered, but um, I was wondering if it would be wise to ask the EDC at the time that we make the grant, if anybody has a specific um, uh, requirement um, uh, or, or data they want uh, reported back to us uh, that, that might not be covered in the general idea of pro progress. Um, something it, 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 you may say, well, I really like to know. Yeah, I can't give you an example right now, but, it, well, but I, things I, do come up. Well, I'll give like you I'll give an example. The plaque. Right. With Bookstock, we basically said that we that this grant is contingent on you using some of the funds to, or to basically that you implement a, a tracking system to tell us how many people are attending each of your events or at least the major ones. Mm -hmm. That was yeah. that we. We did, but you're suggesting that we routinely ask to make sure that they're, yeah, I think that's a good idea, Deborah. If you, at the beginning. Yeah. Well, um, maybe I'll set something up for our next meeting so that we can, in a, maybe in, in a 15 minute uh, process, kind of go through and say, okay, anything added to this grant, this grant, this grant, this grant. And so that I can just get that information in 15 minutes in our next meeting. I wonder if um, if we don't build the framework as a baseline and sort of have another framework on some sort of amount of things Larry's asking for, because it's true that some things require more information than others, but it also might be true and something to consider that maybe someone's at the $5,000 mark and we feel like it doesn't require this. Maybe we should consider having the opportunity to, to waive this uh, as we come to a vote as well. Okay, um, when, great, when um, we were talking about this before, um, John and I were talking about it, it, it was exactly what you said, that there's a framework and then there's another piece of it that we could add on to based on, um, based on what other requirements or information that we want, uh, but maybe there's an opt out piece that we can put in there as well, John, you know, or, you know, that we can take off things as well as add. Why don't you take, why don't you take all these ideas, Deborah, and update the framework and we'll, we'll discuss it, you know, we continue to sure. discuss it. I, I, I think those are, let, let's sort of see what it all adds up to. My, I, I have two, two points to add, one mm -hmm. of which has been reflected so far, but as we add more things, it gets, it gets me closer and closer to my line, my personal line, which is yeah. I want this to be quick and easy and informative. And I think Deborah, what you've put together here is that yeah. it, it's, you know, we're going to, what Deborah didn't show you is we're going to automate this. We're going to tie it into our grant manager platform, which all grantees have to be on anyway. They're going to be able, they're going to, it's going to automatically remind them that the time is them to answer the questions. Deborah <clears> will get, you know, I mean, it all, it's all going to be easy. Yeah. I think the things that have been suggested here won't make it cross over the line. Um, so that, so that's what I would just like to see is how it all kind of adds up to that point. Uh, are we still comfortable with once every three months it strikes me as just given that we meet monthly. I, I think if we did this 
let's put it this way. If we successfully did this with every grantee every six months, for us, it would be a gigantic win. Maybe what we should do is, and I know we agreed at some point in the distant, in the past that it was every three months, but maybe we should start at every six months. And if we find that it is needed to be more often, we can easily adapt an ongoing system. John, may I make a uh, recommendation as far as that's concerned, which is that it depends on the grant. Maybe it's something that we can automate where it's certain grants make sense for us to do it every three months and other grants, it's twice a year. I'm going to tie it. Why don't we tie it to the disbursement of the cash? That's part, that's part of the reason why I was thinking about that, that there are people. You don't get the money unless we get, we see the, the information. Well, Patrick, that's a little, for, for some that that's a little bit too predefined. For example, in Bookstock is is um, there are grantees who are getting reimbursed for monthly salaries. Do you know what okay, I mean? Okay, but but but, but so are we, case, are we dispersing money on a month? Are we dispersing money on a monthly basis? In 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 some grants, yes, for short periods of time, yes. And so for those grantees, my guess is Deborah would, and, and we would delegate this, you know, Deborah would probably suggest, well, let's do that every three months to right. find out what that person has been doing. Whereas if someone else is building a baseball field, you know, for the three months in the winter, you know, from, from, from October to March to May, they're not doing anything. So, so well, there I, we I would, I would make a suggestion that the, why would we be dispersing money on a monthly basis? Uh, it's, that seems... That seems silly to me. That a lot of work, you know. When we tie that to the three months, or you know, uh, it seems silly to. Well, there's a lot of them are reimbursement, so if yeah. you you don't you can't reimburse proactively, right. and that doesn't work. It's, it's all it's all all reimbursements. They're submitting receipts. Yeah. You're you're actually one of the monthly ones is yours. <laughs> yeah, no, I listen. I'd be happy to do a to do a. It would be very easy for me to do. So uh, you can do her cash do flow for folks. That's all, you know. You can, yeah, you can do it quarterly. It's it's up to the. Anyway, I, I, okay, I understand. Deborah, I understand. why don't you take, using take his, these things? Using it as example was a good example, John. Right. <laughs> Marion, I just want to thank you both for for doing this, and I, I think it seems like simplicity is key. And and honestly, because of going from where we've been before, I, I feel like in many cases, just doing it at all or right. once a year would be great. Right. And and I would yeah. be happy with that at least as a first step, you know. Me I, too. I, I, uh, yeah, I, I'd rather I don't want us to 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 fail to implement something fully. Right? Yeah. Because it's the idea. Let's not do, let the perfect become the enemy of the good. So Deborah, maybe you can think that through. Think yeah, through I'll think that. And by the way, I I agree with you. Um, I agree with you, Marion. And and I don't think uh, the way that we're implementing it, I don't think it'll be difficult to, you know, immediately go for the six months or three months or whatever, you know. And even if we do that, we may not still succeed at, you know, getting people to do it. So um, that will be the next kind of evaluation, you know. Maybe the, could, could we do the like have a set period, either three months, six months, whatever, and make that determination when we approve the grant. I'm not sure what you meant by that. Uh, you were saying right We've now- We've already approved the grant before they were- No, no, that's not what I mean. What I mean is determine what, what the, the uh, reporting process is. So if, depending what the grant is, oh, you need to re report every three months, or this one that you can do once a year, or this one you can do six months and have that three, six, one, and, and just when we approve the grant, say, this is your reporting structure. That would I be a simple way to do it. Right. And I think moving forward, that's kind of what Larry was also uh, uh, saying earlier, is that okay. as we go through it, you know, right from the beginning, we add the things that we need to add as far as data. And that will be the moment that we can decide. Um, Larry's much smarter. Than as simple, it may not be as simple as larger grants need to be every X many months and smaller grants don't. You know, who knows? We might want information from a right. smaller grant. Based on the grant. Yeah. My, my favorite one, um, Beth knows, uh, fireworks. There were fireworks meeting over. <laughs> right. Exactly. All right. Um, so, De so Deborah, good. Let's, we'll put it on the agenda again for next yeah. month with version two or three, whatever yeah. version we're up to. Yeah. Good stuff, Deb. Okay. Yeah. This is, I think, overdue and a good, yeah, this is a good plan. Oh, sorry. I, 
at the risk of opening up a can of worms. Um, this is the second very brief mention of demographics. First was we're marketing to people with a certain income level. And now not, you know, counting the type, you know, the gender of people or wh whatever. The reason for both of those comments is, I, it's reasonable to assume, that we have a picture of the Woodstock that we want to be, and that the demographic, and that some of that is a demographic picture, and the data that we would collect would tell us whether or not we're moving towards that picture or not. And I would just like to say that if we do put the, that whenever we are putting an effort into achieving a demographic result or aspiration, that we be very, very certain that the picture that we want to achieve is clear and agreed upon, not just by the EDC, but by, but by, whatever, and by, by whatever community we think is relevant. And what I'm, I'm saying this not because I have a picture in mind, but actually I'm saying this because I don't have a picture in mind. And it's fine with me if, if others have a picture in mind and there's a consensus. Re remembering, by the way, that we couldn't reach consensus on what kind of garbage cans to have, I worry that we may not have a consensus. And the we, I don't mean the nine of us, but whatever group is relevant, that there may not be a consensus or that we may each define it differently. And I just, I, well, I'm not afraid of having a clear picture and pursuing it. I think that's part of community development, but I am afraid of pursuing something where the picture isn't clear. And so it, it, I don't think, I, I don't, again, I'm, I don't wanna shut off discussion. If one or two people wanna make comments about this, Mary, you're, no, it's okay. you're welcome. No, you're welcome to. But when we get to the point where we're deciding to, whether it's market to certain segments or, track data and whatever, you know, um, unless it's really just for informational purposes, which, they have, you know, which it might just be. And that, that I think has value. I don't have a problem with that. But if we're starting to make trade-offs between the kind of community we want and the dollar value of economic growth, I'm fine with making those trade-offs as long as, as, as I think we have an obligation to make sure that there's some clear direction that we're either, either given or choosing. So uh, it, just a couple brief comments about this, because I, 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 yeah. I, I kind of want to um, I just want to be, I, I want us to be super mindful and clear about the languaging we're using around this, um, because we have to tread uh, carefully as well as, um, as well as really, I mean, I think it's worth a discussion, but um using demographics to create a specific type of community is a very, very dangerous thing to say that this is, that that's what we're creating. Okay, um, good. And uh, cause that's, that, um, that runs us into all sorts of problems ethically, morally, and otherwise. Um, and I don't think that's what you mean, but it's how it can, is conveyed, especially coming from a predominantly white uh, community, I think it's a um, it's a it's a very uh, tricky road. Um, uh, I would be very yeah. Just to be clear, so I appreciate now why you're making that comment. I would be totally clear, not collecting that information and not having a picture of what we want to achieve. That, no, that I, but I think I having the information is really valid for uh, community growth and for understanding of what the community is becoming naturally, and thereby understanding where our dollars need to go to as far as marketing or this, that, or the other, but to be uh, wanting to actively create a specific type of community can is um, something that doesn't feel right. I, I could not agree more. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 it maybe doesn't need to be said, but I feel like I need to say, because it sounds like everybody's trying to be very careful. And I think, but I just want to be clear that when we talk about, at least when I talk about if I even talk about designing a type of community, it is an inclusive and welcoming community of all people of all incomes, all genders, all races, all ethnicities. I, I just want to say that out loud because when we have this conversation, it sounds like we're tiptoeing around something. It, it could be perceived 
in some other way. Well, and I just feel like I needed to say that out loud. Yeah, Perfect. but Mary and I, I just I, demographics, and thank you for that. And and it, I'm being careful with my wording because we should be careful with our wording with this. You know, not I'm not tiptoeing around it as much as just being mindful. And demographics are exactly the things that you just mentioned, right? They are. Well, well I just would basically say that if, if what you said is what everyone agrees with, I certainly do. I don't know that anyone would. I certainly totally agree with it. Totally. We should not waste our time collecting demographic data. There's I'm gonna, literally, there's I'm gonna, literally I'm gonna no throw, Let me throw a curveball in here because Patrick. You know, the, 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 as a marketing person, we have a product. We need to understand who buys our product and then we market to that group who buys our product. Uh, and, and that's how I see this that simple. The community aspect of it, uh, I agree. We want to be opening and welcoming to all categories and so forth. But you know, in terms of spending marketing dollars, you know, I want to make sure that at the end of the day, the marketing dollars that we spend bring back revenue to justify the marketing dollars. So you know, it's a little different when you look at 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 Woodstock as a product versus Woodstock as a community. So I think you you have to make that distinction between the two sides of it. Uh, you know, just FYI, that that's kind of my position on it. Okay. Well, I think this conversation, in some ways, makes my point, which I obviously made. Badly. Um, I, I, I don't I, think you did. I, no, I, I don't think you did either. Apply that. I, right, I, okay. I just wanted us to be clear on what we were using the demographics for, and and that it's because yeah, I do think having demographic information is is valuable. It's also valuable I, potentially for tax purposes or for uh, large larger grants and blah blah blah. I, 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 maybe, and I even guess maybe. See, let's use Ted example. Ted as an example. I mean, she wants to know what demographics for people are going to come to Ted. You know, and she's got a market to those people to make Ted successful. Bookstock, the same thing. You know, so you 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 can't you can't tie together marketing demographics with community demographics. They're two different things. I agree with that. Yeah, well said. Uh, Larry's got his hand up. Larry, uh, Larry, go ahead. Yeah, um, when when bringing up marketing, um, it seems to me that uh, we are. We need to start uh, being active in doing the survey and uh, analysis that we uh, said we were going to do when we we uh, gave um, the marketing group the $100,000 um, and that um, a lot of what you're asking about is is um, is information that we should we should be gathering for an informed decision about marketing. Uh, in the future. So it seems I, I'm wondering what I'm not sure what the status of that effort is. It's the next agenda. Next topic. <laughs> yeah, it's the next oh. agenda item. I, yeah. Good lead in, Larry. Good lead in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm completely comfortable. But but it, it but it does work into that same thing. I mean, we we have. I, I don't know that we have any business defining any of that. Um, I, 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 uh, all I'm saying is, if we're going to put an effort towards something, we better have a business doing what that effort is going towards. And if we don't have a business doing what that effort is going towards, we shouldn't make the effort to collect the data. And I'm still not clear in this discussion, just personally, whether or not we have a business, what the purpose of collecting data is, and and whether we have a business with that purpose. I think it's it's maybe in some of these things that people have suggested, I just want to digest. I just want to make sure that if we're going to, if we're going to collect data, that we're clear on why we're collecting it. I suppose that that's, that's what I, all and I'm I, really and trying and to John, say. And John, I, I think you're right there, but I think it's still a definition of marketing data versus community Could be. data. If we're, whatever, it, whatever data we're going to collect, I think we're clear. Uh, Deborah put up six questions. Mm -hmm. We're collecting those data. That's work. We're clear on what the benefit is. We're going to learn mm -hmm. from that. Right. That, that passes my test for me anyway. Yeah, I think for everybody. I just want to, as we expand that, which was what, you know, I just want to make sure that we, are equally comfortable with that. Okay, thank you for Marion for you know for making clear that that um, 
this wasn't a discussion about inclusion. Right. It may have sounded yeah, that yeah. way. Thank you for making yeah. clear that it wasn't. Okay. Um, and, and I think we need to keep in mind too, John, we are the EDC. Yeah. Yeah, so. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm... Uh, my presentation has disappeared. <laughs> Oh, it has come back. Give me one second. And to Larry's introductory introduction point. Okay. So I have the big font version, which I will go through with you first. Thank you. Yeah. This is the marketing work plan, big font version. Between now and the end of the year, this is, I think, what we said we would do. And I think if we didn't quite say this, this is what I think we should do. I'm pretty sure it's, it's really quite consistent with what we talked about. There are kind of, it starts, and this is to some extent sequential, but not completely. It's intellectually sequential. We can't do the thing on the right until we've done the things on the left, but we can, and the schedule that I'm, the very high level schedule I'm proposing does start with the thing on the right before we finish all the things in the left because there's work that can be done and we don't wanna leave everything to the last minute. Basically what we're trying to understand on the next page, I'm just gonna read it. The objective is, the very top, to help the EDC determine the objectives we should set for the marketing programs we fund, focused in particular on whether we hope to increase, maintain, or decrease the volume of visitors to Woodstock and how we handle whatever that resulting volume is. And there's no subtlety in that question. It's not just the number of visitors, but, the, but what kind of visitors and when, and, you know, and, and, and uh, who do we target and what are we, what messages and all of those things. But just roughly speaking, this is the simple issue that kind of triggered this. We're going to start with intellect. Conceptually, we start with understanding the views of three, community, three groups, the local community, visitors, and merchants. And the process for understanding those is pretty similar. They're not identical. I'll, and I'll show you what the proposed process is. It's not that different from what we saw before. I just want to go over it again. And, um, then as a result of what those three groups say, we would then make some, create some proposals and ideas and eventually make some decisions about two things. One is what infrastructure do we need to meet whichever of the demands or needs of those three groups we think are most important? Um, just to not be so conceptual about it, do we need more bathrooms? Do we need more restaurants serving lunch on certain days? Do we need more parking? Those three for sure are going to come up. And that's an example of how this doesn't have to be sequential. We can start trying to figure out where to find more parking spaces before we finish the surveys. That's not to prejudge the conclusion. The conclusion may be that we don't actually need more parking, which wouldn't astonish me, to be honest. I, because I think that there actually is, that there may be enough parking, but leave that aside. So we basically survey and understand the views of three important constituencies. We figure out on the one hand, what infrastructure do we need to meet their needs as best we can afford to, or best we decide to, and what marketing strategies do we take? This is not whether we use class four and whether we use email, but are we trying to attract people at the low periods to even things out? We're we trying to build on our strengths and successes and make the big events bigger. Are we trying to target people who can spend the most amount of money here? Or are we trying to target people who, you know, will benefit from the richness of the Woodstock experience? But whatever. And then lastly, we have to convert those, those marketing strategies into marketing tactics and technology. There's been, there are, we have built a platform. It's good at many things. It's expensive. There's a very simple question being asked by a number of people. Do we need to have that expensive platform and all the things it can do? Um, and if we, if we do need it, how much is it going to cost? Great. We built it. If we don't need it, what are we going to substitute? And we don't want to get caught in 2024 and beyond 
wanting to substitute it, but not having the substitution. So we need to start thinking about that now. So that's the high level work plan. Now I can go into more detail and I will, and I'll lay out what I think is a plausible schedule, but let me just pause right here and ask, is this any critique of this at this level? Or any questions? Well, not, not questions, any, you know, just, is there a big block, is there, does anything not belong here or is there some big blue block missing? Okay, I mean, you can always add so, it later. Oh, sorry, go ahead. John, John, yeah. so when the, the um, survey of local community visitors and merchants is done and it, is there then a, a, an assumed process of, of yeah. um, figuring out what the, what, what the, yeah. What the total analysis. Is. Yeah, yeah, not an assumed one. I'm about to show you what that is. Okay. I'm just starting at the top to just make sure that the topics are right. And, and by the way, the process that I'm going to describe isn't complete, but it's kind of rough. So um, now you guys, this document is on the web, so it's on the EDC website if you want to pull it up. I, I doubt, I don't, maybe you can read it. You can always make the video smaller. Can, can you guys see it on your, are you sharing your? And I think I've seen it. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, actually, and there's a hard copy there, Mary. Hard copy. Thanks. There are 13 of them since Greta and I are the only ones. So the, I think, I hope there are seven things, one, two, three, four, five, six things, A, B, C, D, E, F, yeah. So those six things are now broken out in a little bit more detail. Assess the views of the local community, uh, you know, asking them these questions, the process, Larry, that you were talking about, and Marion is leading this group. Hold a public meeting to explain the issues, hear from different constituents, and help inform questions for a survey. It's sort of a, what is it called, a focus group-ish thing. And that, Marion is going to try to do that in before the end of April. Um, that would then design, we would then use that information and our own thinking to design an online survey in May. We do the survey in June and we analyze and publicize the results in July. John, when do you want questions? So I, I have one question on this one. This. Uh, you're explaining the issues. Is, is if you're going in with what the issues are, does that make sense? Uh, well, I think explain the issues would be- the known issues? Yeah, yeah. It's it's, a frame, it's really just to frame that it's. I, I I should say frame the discussion. It's not it's not telling them what the problems are. No, it's here yeah, yeah. Because they're going to tell us, right? That's the whole yeah, idea yeah. is for them to tell us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think I you know I would start I would start with this page. This is what we're doing. We want to hear right. your views, and I would start with this. With with sorry, I can't I can't highlight it with that that sentence in italics up here. This is why yep. we're doing it. That's probably okay. the explaining uh, that I would do. Yeah, no, I do. You, you, you solved my problem with it. What yeah, you... yeah, okay, all right. All right. So, so basically, yeah. So that that's the first bucket. I, we don't need. We're not going to like design it by committee now. Do, is there anything important you want to add or? No, I mean, no. Okay. Nothing important yeah. I want to add. Okay. Other than I mean, we've been. Talk about it, think about it. Yeah, it's. Yeah, I think we we're targeting a date, April twenty second, something like that. And it's yep. you know the first, the first, yeah. So this is often running to the extent that it's it's early days, but it's often running. So I think we can do this. Do you think this is time frame? You may want to tweak it a little bit, but it's by the end by July we finish. I think this is reasonable. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, similar process for assessing the experiences of visitors. This is a little bit more complicated. Um, we want to talk to lodging owners to understand what information they have, the inn in particular, but others also. We want to design a survey, obviously. Um, I, I don't, uh, uh, we want to design a survey. We may want to have a QR code survey type thing where we have, where, where we prompt people to answer surveys. We want to use the platform to the extent we can to survey the 20,000 names or 18,000 names that we have um, in some fashion. The one different, so, and, you know, so we would hopefully conduct, do this work in April and May, conduct the survey in June, similar timeframe in July, we get the results and we can bring those two things together. 
And the same thing is going to be with merchants. So July is kind of the time when we learn about the, you know, the three constituencies. The one thing that's different here than the other two constituencies is conducting online sent, uh, sentiment. It says sentient analysis, but it should say sentiment analysis. Um, there's an M missing. And um, th that's something that I think is very powerful if we can do it inexpensively. And I'm still investigating that. That um, That's the, uh, that's the uh, TripAdvisor thing? Yeah, it's, but it's, and it's, or more than TripAdvisor. TripAdvisor has a, has a TripAdvisor platform, which is, you know, 7 million comments a month, but there's, you could, there's actually, you know, a broader, there's broader platforms that, that do thousands of sites. Perfect. Um, we, we, and they're more expensive, you know, we have to, we have to just work out the practicalities of it, but um, I think it could be potentially very powerful. So similar process again, by July, we would have the answers to this. Now, there's nobody currently, there's no EDC member currently leading that. Um, uh, so I'm just going to comment on this. I, I I should have done this before today, but immediately following this meeting, I'm, I'm going to reach out to those of some of you and see if you're interested. And if um, you are interested, you can reach out to me. Um, assess the priorities of the local merchants. Um, convening here, hopefully with the help of the chamber, the local merchants, they've already had one meeting for those of you. I don't know if any of you, Patrick, you were there. Um, was anyone else at the meeting of the local merchants the other day? They, it they was were, a great meeting to be at. If you got, if they have another one, you should, we should all attend. Well, there were 40, mer there were 40 people in the room. It was sort of amazing. Yeah. And Re I think represented most, 30 businesses. Yeah. And they're going to meet again. So and so and we're tied into this process. So they're sort of doing work with us. I, you've now been an EDC member, Greta, for almost an hour and a half. So you're fair game for this question. But your background, it, it might be something that I think this is actually going to be a, a relatively constrained, focused effort. Yeah. Oh, you're going to include it. Okay, fine. If you want to get the credit for it, that's fine. But if you think about that, because I think this um, this is the kind of thing where your background would really be would really be useful. Um, I don't know that we're going to need to do a survey. I think it really depends. I pr prior to that meeting, I, I was thought we had to do a survey because the merchants never get together. But now it looks like they're going to get together regularly. So I think we may have a we may have an option. Certainly, there's another meeting coming up that'll be scheduled not by us. So um, which is good, better than us having to do it. So. Uh, so that, those are the three survey type things. And again, I think the objective is by July, here it says June, but by June or by July, having all three at one together so that we can look at the different, and I think the perspectives are going to be quite different and trying to integrate and synthesize that. So that would sort of suggest that at our July or possibly August meeting, depending on the timing of it, because it's the first week in August that that would be a time when we would have a public EDC meeting devoted almost entirely to looking at those results. We'd promote it to the public. So we get a public meeting or brainstorming session along with an EDC meeting in, in August. Then there's the infrastructure improvements. And my suggestion is that we start that now because we know that three things that I talked about, restrooms, food, and parking are, the, the, we, we know, we know that those are hypotheses. We, we don't know for sure. I think the problems will take a little bit of time to think about. Um, I think all of them are addressable, some at very little cost and some at more cost. And I'm planning to lead that group unless someone else wants to, but I'm inter really interested in that group. And again, we would, I think, convene some small groups of people to assess some ideas and then have a, have a more public meeting to think through the solutions and propose options and so forth. I think in each of these cases, there are going to be multiple options. There's not going to be one right answer for where we put parking or how we put parking or how much we pay for parking. The, the last, I'm going to say, the, the sixth one, E, is the hardest one. It's sort of the marketing strategy. And there, I don't think we really can start much of that until we get the results from the three groups. So I've sort of said that that starts in August. And, this, and I'm suggesting that the September and October EDC meeting be focused on that. Right? If the August meeting is focused on what we've learned from the surveys, from the constituents, the September and October meetings can be 
where we start to debate now with the facts in our hands, well, what do we do about it? And I think we will have some of the same debates that we've had now up, up leading up to this year's budget, but those debates will now be informed by, by both what the constituents prefer and also by August, some semi-solid ideas for how we can treat the, 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 the downsides of economic growth. And so I'm imagining, by the way, that this leads potentially to a marketing budget that includes infrastructure money, right? Or, I mean, maybe those are two different programs, but it basically goes hand in hand. When um, you say infrastructure, John, you mean physical infrastructure like- Yeah, I mean, bucket, bucket B, the parking, food, and, and, yeah. and uh, okay. restrooms. I think you need to keep the two separate marketing versus infrastructure. Well, yeah, whatever. My point is that I think we, 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 I think it would, I'm imagining that we would only approve one with the other. I mean, really? It, really? You're going to tie them together like that? I disagree with that. Okay. Well, anyway, I, I'm just imagining. I, anyway, we, we would have, you know, we, we would, we would have plans for, um, in, in any event, I, I think the timing of them, I think the point is that, that that we have the discussion in in the, in bucket E, which is our overall marketing strategy, informed not only by the points of view of the three constituents groups, but also by the ideas that have been generated by the infrastructure group. You know, like in the ex you know like in the extreme, it will cost us a million dollars to add one bathroom. Uh, you know, I think that that will influence whether or not we want to have a strategy of increasing tourism or not. So, um, I think those I think they're tied together conceptually. Whether the programs are managed, you know, or funded the same, or how they're funded is a, is a completely different issue. I agree with that, Patrick. That's that, that's not important. And then, lastly, so I think bucket E starts in August, ideally, or in August, September, October. Bucket F, which is the marketing sort of tactics and operations and platforms, that I think brainstorming about that should start now so that we are not pressed for options. It's not decisions. We, between April and October, we would not make any decisions. There's no basis to make the decisions. Bucket F, the tactics and platforms and, and mechanics of it has to follow the strategy. And we don't know what the strategy is. But it's going to take us some time to figure out what our options are. And I think we won't, I don't think it's a good idea for us to be caught again with really only one operating platform that we can choose. So we have two of, so, the, so that's the, Larry, that's the next level. You know, it's still pretty high level, but it's roughly a schedule and a process for each of those buckets. Comments about this other than the obvious one, which is we need people to lead these different groups. They don't have to be EDC members. It could be other people, but so Michael and then Tom. Um, yeah, I guess my only question is, do we already know the answer to all of these questions? Because I feel like we've had meetings and meetings over the years and we, we kind of have answered all these questions over time. And this is just seems like a long process to get to the same place. Well, pick one question and say what your answer is, and let's see if among the community of eight people, or if there's more, whether we agree. Uh, well, let's look at D. We've kind of given all the answers in the approach, right? I mean, those are things. These are things that have been resulting from meetings in meetings that we've had, and that's how we got those questions, right? Do we have a no, lack no. of pressure? We know that. Yes, we do. No, no, but sorry, section section. The bucket D is 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 to come up with a plan to add parking spaces, for example. We don't have that. We, 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 we I think we, uh, by the way, I just, I, just to kind of inject facts into this on October 11th or 10th in 2021, maybe it was 2022, I can't remember, it's the peak weekend of foliage. I walked into, I've mentioned this before, there's 79 parking spaces at the Otakwichi Health Center, 64 of them were empty at noon on Saturday of the peak day. It's probably the peak parking day of the year, except for Wassel. There's 64 parking spaces available. So 
So I would certainly want as a taxpayer, you know, as an EDC member, I would want to, you know, understand what the cost of making parking more close, closer to, I don't know, Elm Street, you know, or they, 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 that's pretty close. I mean, you, you can walk from there. So I, so I guess, the, I guess my point is that, that, that I, 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 even, even these, quite, for example, if the visitors basically say, we're not, we don't have a problem with, with lunch on, you know, we're very happy to come back to Woodstock. Yeah, I wish there were more. There was more lunch. Then maybe we don't have to solve that problem. So I think that there, I, I don't think I personally don't think we know we know the answers. But even if we did know the answers and we assume that these are the problems, I don't think we have solutions for them. And that's 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 what this group would, at a minimum, work on. So does that answer and, and to your point? I, to, to your point, John. Too, I think we think we know, but we're not going to know until we really ask the questions. And it may yeah. be that we know three quarters of it. But there'll be some surprise things that we didn't anticipate. I'm sure, there'll be some things that come up, but I, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, 90 plus percent of this, we already know. If you do the surveys, we're going to get the same answers. Well, that's just my that's my input. Yeah, yeah, no, you, you may be right. I, here's here's a question that I think half the community will be surprised at, which is whether visitors are having a good experience or not. Or, no, no, no. Would, would you come back to Woodstock? I think that there are people who would, who uh, not, not only think, there are people on the EDC, Joe is not here, but I can speak for him, who basically have said that, that in their view, the answer to that question is the vast majority of people will say, no, I'm not coming back to Woodstock. I, I've heard, I've heard I can say, owners, I can the opposite answer. You, you, Patrick, would give the opposite example based on surveys from the people who answer his surveys. Yep. I'm yeah, not saying who's yeah. right, you know. But so, so, I, now Michael. Having said that, you know, I, I think we can always cut this short if, if, if we think we we know. Well, let me put it this way: I think everyone agrees that they know. It's just what they what they agree that they know. Most people agree that they know, but what they agree that they know is the same. I don't know. Right. I, I, <laughs> I know. I think this. I think this will be a very good exercise for us to do to really truly understand. And we're going to think we know more than we know, and and we're yeah. going to be surprised. We'll find. Well, let's see if Michael. Michael has a ninety-five percent. Michael, write down on a piece yeah. of paper. Put a seal <laughs> in an envelope. Yes. We'll open it on December thirty-first. Greta and then Deborah. Well, I was just going to share that I think that investing in infrastructure is marketing in a lot of ways, and I think that to to make the experience of the people who are coming more positive and want to come back. Maybe it's the amount, you know, a certain amount of the, what would be a marketing budget, a good amount is actually an investment in improving the experience and, you know, giving a grant to somebody who can put another restaurant out there. And, or, you know, I just, I think that, I think that this all makes sense to gather that information, to figure out where that money is going. And if it really is like, if our end game should be marketing or if it should be like infrastructure marketing. Well, I think that, that, I, that, might, that it, might all be obvious. No, no, no. I think that the, the, the way I would say it is to defer the debate until we get the results of exactly. these analysis. Exactly. This, this does seem the, like it'll the, get. The, there's an infrastructure box in the same page that there's a mark, there are marketing boxes. That I think everyone agrees is, is appropriate. Yeah. How, how we then decide to trade those things off or combine them or whatever is. We need the information to to decide that, Deborah, and then Todd. Well, I, I mean, I, I think Michael, you may be right, or maybe it's seventy five percent, not ninety percent, but <laughs> it doesn't really matter. The I think that the point is that the dialogue is the most important thing because for the last two years we keep getting hung up on the same thing, and so it's important to bring the community in to listen, to hear, to validate. And even if we come out with one, two, or three new strategies that we didn't think of, you know, kudos. That that makes the time worth worthwhile. But it also will be a it's an investment in um, the community's belief in EDC and what we're doing. And so I think that's that that's where the value is. Yeah. Todd. Yeah. Um, I just want to say that this makes my head explode. And I just, I just, I, I'm, it, I, I'm with Mike on this. It's, we should just be focusing on targeted approaches and finding community input if they work or not. There's so many things. This is a year of work. 
that I don't, I just don't have the brain capacity personally, but I have capacity for many things that the EDC does. I think that, you know, to Deb's point, you know, it's great if people like through the um, changes we're making to awardees of grants and recognition for the EDC, but I personally don't give a crap if everyone hates what we do, if I know it's good for the town and they keep electing us to do it. Um, I want to see results and I just feel like this is going to be 50, 60, 80 hours in the weeds and we're still going to be talking about bathrooms and it harkens me back to picnic benches and um, trash cans and I just feel like I'm afraid we're going to go backwards because Patrick needs a lot of money to keep doing what he built and I and Patrick I love you but I go back to feeling like I got cheated last year because I thought that we wouldn't need to spend this money ad infinitum but we really need to, and that's how we got to this place. So now, because I feel cheated, now I have 100 hours of EDC work in six months, and so does everyone else, and it better not be about trash cans, and I feel like there's trash cans in here. So I just want to be mindful of our time, mindful of the impact that it has, and taking all these items and throwing it under the guise of marketing and the plan on marketing and the allocated funds for marketing isn't really staying focused on our major grants initiative. And we're kind of just saying, we're going to put trash cans under marketing because we need to know if we're paying for trash cans, how much we have left for marketing. Um, I think, it just I discourages think missing, me. It just really discourages me. Point. I think everyone's missing the big point. I think Deborah hit it uh, right, on, right on target is talking to the different consent talking to the businesses we haven't really done that and they haven't participated talking to the community we haven't really done that and they haven't participated those that first abc boxes uh are are going to be critical for us to really understand what's going on so i, I want to inter interject i i disagree working groups have talked to the community they have talked to the businesses and it takes a lot you have to knock on their door you have to force them. You have to harass them. You have to force them to come and they still won't come. Then you have to call them again. You have to be nice. You have to be mean and everything in between. This yep, is, yep. look at how many people have ever come to every meeting we've ever had. That's not us. The community just wants Very a town true. that works. They want a town that feels like they can come and be happy and not stressed out. And it's our job to deal with the stress and give them what they want, but they're not going to show up. It's who showed up here today? about Carolyn's thing. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm glad that no one showed up because Carolyn's thing's great. But I just really want to be mindful of all of our time. And what we're really talking about is we're just freaked out that we have to spend so much money in marketing or it all falls apart. Yeah, I'm tired of people tying this all to marketing. Okay, guys? Well, it says yeah, marketing the, working plan. And yeah, that's, that's my, those that's are my words. words. Yeah, yeah, those are, the, you know, we're, it, this is much more than marketing. We're talking about people's experience in Woodstock. We're talking about infrastructure of the town. We're talking about way more than marketing yeah. here. And, and please don't tie it to marketing, okay? It's yeah. not marketing. I, you know, call it customer experience, call it anything, but it's not marketing. Okay, I'll, I'll just call it the word plan. Marion. Um, the one thing I, I, I think we have had when we talk about these things, a bunch of times we hear from a few voices that are loud that um have strong opinions and i think one thing i know from you know anytime you do any public work whether it's political or social media it's very easy to think that the very loud voices are representative voices but they aren't they're actually the loud voices and i think some of these things like encouraging uh community forum doing a survey that gives us a little bit of access to how the community feels and lets us get beyond just hearing the loud voices, I think is valuable. On the other hand, I had sort of just looked at this plan and thought, wow, John did a ton of work and this is really thorough and this looks great until Todd just said, oh my God. And I really hadn't thought of it that way. <laughs> and so I, I actually, I do see your point, Todd. This is this is a lot, and and are we over? You know, is, is this more than we need to be doing? It's a, it's a worthwhile question. Yeah, sure. it's a, well. Look, here, here's the thing. The, the, the let's let's just let's take as an example. Um, there's there's eight of us here. Are we satisfied with the restaurant capacity that we have in Woodstock? No. Nobody no, is. No point of view. Well, Greta has a point of view. She said no. 
No. You, you can you can say whatever. For I me, say yes. For me personally, I think it's fine, but I know that. No, no, but just yeah, I'm asking you yeah, personally. Yeah. No. Yes. Yes. But I just oh. say like there's there's a, no. there's a middle ground between. I I, I, yeah. I understand, but yeah. I'm just asking. I'm just saying there's yeah. eight people out of three thousand. Let's right. just see. Let's if eight people agree, it doesn't prove anything. If eight people disagree, it does prove something. Yes. No. No. So no. Yes. 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 Patrick. No. No, two no, two and two. Michael? No. Three no's. Deborah? No. Four no's. Todd? No. All right, five no's. Larry? We lost yes. Larry. All right, five no's, three yes. I'm going to qualify mine because I, I have a problem. Yeah, with no, no, it doesn't, it's, well, it doesn't work that way. Well, you no, I know it doesn't it work doesn't that way, but I'm saying, I'm saying no because of because of gaps. That's really what I'm saying no about. Okay. And that's a that's a workforce issue. Yeah, but that's a no. Yeah, it's not. That's it's fine. Not, Five and three. Right no. So that that's you know kind of with the law of largest small numbers. So we don't. So 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 should we so should we um, spend resources to get more restaurants? The opposite. Five to three the other way. Yes. No. I would say no. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, right. That's the wrong question. I, my point is, my point is that it's it's well and good to say this is a lot of work, but the next set part of that, the end of that sentence is, and we can make decisions without doing it. What decisions would we make on this issue? Is there a middle ground? That's my well, question. It, I mean, in terms of the amount of work, like, is there a is oh this, yeah, yeah, is this too complex of a of a plan? That's kind of my question. No, no, it's is, a, there a, I, is there a simpler way to? That's a way better way of saying that than my 15 minute rambling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't have thought of it without yours, Todd. You, yeah. you, you, <laughs> uh, look, I think let, let's, here's, here's the plan. Let, let's talk about this plan. And I'm asking this legitimately, can we take any of the boxes off this page? No. Merchants. No, you, had, you weren't at that meeting. And you would, you, the merchants have a loud voice. You can't take the merchants off. Absolutely not. Sorry, Marion, I've been through this before I in the discussions <laughs> when people say this work plan is too complicated. I'm going to win this one, but I know you. I just want you yeah. to see how John, we go through the process. I think the thing that's interesting about this is if you go back to the next page and the page after, you can, yeah. I mean, <laughs> It's a lot of writing. <laughs> so it's it's a, lot a lot of words. Overwhelming. <laughs> but it's a matter of three or four meetings divvied up among three or four people yeah. over about six months. Like it, yeah. it, it it's I a really lot, it's a lot of black ink, but I actually think it's it's fairly precise. Yeah. As and complicated as it looks. Yeah. Yeah, but if you get us you take the survey and your results are five on one side, three on the other, then what are you doing with that result? I mean, are you, what are you doing with that? Is, is that enough information to actually move forward in a positive direction? Or are you just like, okay, well, it's mixed. We don't know what to do. Like, What's should like we pursue- general assembly, you know, you have your- I mean, that's go, pretty much what's going to happen. We have a group happen. of eight people Our, who debate it and figure it out, you know, yeah, based yeah, on some- Some people problems. want more tourists, some people want less. And so then right. what? So what do you get 50-50? So what, what do you do then? I mean, is the survey really going to give you that power? I mean, I guess here's the deal. I'm a little. We don't know until we from, do it. I'm a little I, scarred I, I, from the housing survey. We spent 20 grand on a housing survey a few years back to find out what kind of housing do we need. But we already knew the answer to that question, and and it gave us exactly the same answers that we already knew. We need affordable housing, right? We need more units. We need more rental houses. I feel like a lot of this is redundant to things that we've done in the past, and we already know a lot of the answers. So why not? Just take your marketing and, and do it instead of getting more and more research behind it. Well, and, and again, it's not my field, and maybe I'm wrong, but that those are my questions with this with but, this plan. It's a, lot, it's a lot of work. I think there are legitimate questions that need to be asked. What what is the impact on the community? You know, positive and negative. How do people feel about it? I think that's. I think those are legitimate and yeah, important I mean, questions to ask. There were merchants that there, there were merchants who basically said, "We don't want more visitors." Yeah. at this meeting they said if we can't serve them we don't want more visitors but then there's a bunch of merchants that want more visitors 
I know, Michael, uh, so, you, you, you've, you've, right. I mean, Joe, if Joe were here, he'd basically say that, you know, we're sending people, we're sending negative marketing. We're, we're doing negative marketing right now. I mean, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but, you know, we're sending people out who are basically telling everyone not to come to Woodstock. Why should we be, why should we be encouraging more people to do that? It makes no sense. Except Patrick would say that, that the people are leaving saying exactly the opposite. Yeah, I get I get people saying they loved it. They come back again and just you know, you know, yeah. Do we have enough restaurants? Yeah, no, but they understand that and they you know they they use the whole Woodstock area, not just downtown Woodstock. So you know, it's a different. It, we we have to remember we're really marketing Woodstock area, not Woodstock Village. You know, so I mean, we push the village, but they're going everywhere. But I think the real point is actually, Michael. I don't think we know, or at yeah. least I, I, I'm not confident that that all of these issues are going to be five to three or four to four. They might be. And there is, we should admit, there is a chance that if we do this work or some version of this work, that we get results. There is definitely a chance that we get results that don't lead us anywhere. We should, that, that's a risk. Mm -hmm. that we have to admit that. But I, I do think, my guess is, is that there, oops, sorry. That's, well, we can't talk about this anymore because my battery is dead. Um, <laughs> But I do think that there's a chance that some of the issues will will come out not four to four or five to three. Some of them will come out 85-15, which, by the way, I think I think one of the issues that is going to come out 85-15 is, did you have a good time in Woodstock? For the same reason that I complained about the heavy food at lunch, but I would go back to Zermatt in an instant. And what people are hearing in Woodstock is I complained about the food, which I did complain about the food, but everything else was fantastic. So anyway, that's my hypothesis. I could hey, be wrong. John, I think John, you also question. you made a point to me that I think is a good one to make before, which is it let's just say though for arguments that people don't want as many tourists. Well, then that that bodes the question, well, do you want less restaurants then? Right. Because you know, there's a there's a a, a push and a pull to that. You know, yeah, less people, so, you know, less business, you know, so it, it's a fine line and we need to understand that better. And I don't think we know it. But I do think, Michael, to your point, there is a risk that we will do this work and that it won't lead us anywhere. Mm -hmm. I, I think that Marion, but Marion's question seemed to resonate with some of you. It says, look, you know, and to Deborah's point, it is a lot of black ink. I mean, this is how consultants put their workplace together. So tired reading. You're right. I understand that. So really what we're we're talking about here is our six kind of brainstorming groups. There's three groups that are going to do a survey, basically. And and by, so some of the ways we can simplify, it. we can not do the online analysis, or if we find a way to do it, I mean, I'm actually happy to do it. It takes no, it's, it just takes a little bit of money and you push a button or not. If, if there's just takes a little bit of money and push a button, I'll do that. And, and that'll be, that'll be really informative, I think. We'll see, but it won't be a lot of work. And, um, and that'll be easier, John, in some ways to, to do all this stuff. Oh, it's saying. much easier. Yeah. So if basically, if the if the visitors if if the visitors survey if the community survey is just a community survey the way we've done them before, if the visitors survey is simply let's send let's use the platform and survey the eighteen thousand people. That's it. We're not going to go to the ins. We're not going to do the sentiment analysis. We're not going to you know we're just going to do and, and if we want we don't have to have a community meeting to build a survey. We'll just have three people get together. You guys, three of people decide the survey, and we'll go and do the survey. And that'll be 85% as good as getting the community involved. The community can get involved, Deborah, to your point, when we have the results. So we basically do three surveys, and then we have one big community meeting. We're still being faithful to the six blue boxes. We're just doing it. We're just, you know, each box is just one thing. Then there's a community meeting to kind of discuss it all. And then the EDC starts to do its deliberations. If we describe it that way, and that is less actual steps than what was in my plan. I mean, if we cut out a third or 40% of the steps. Can you put that on one page so we have an either or? Just yeah. Like, like, no, no, no. Like, and like, maintain a large size font, please. <laughs> <laughs> just so I understand what you just said, because it sounds good, but I'm, I just want to make sure I understand exactly what it is. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'll, I'll try to, yeah. Let, let me rewrite that with this in mind. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and and basically just get it down to its essence. And For the I, visitors, I, John, don't don't use don't use the the list the names we've collected because we don't know how many of them actually have come. We know that we can market to them. They're interested in Woodstock. I think the the program that you were talking about before is better. You'll get a better result. 
I, there'll be one there'll be one visitor survey effort if it's a QR code or it's collecting the ends or it's the platform yeah. but there'll only be one of those or the, yeah. there'll be only one of those there'll be one community survey and there'll be one merchant survey you know and the, the, or, or even or even yeah one, one more I think it probably we need to count I think so okay I, I'll modify that plan and um, we'll and share that before next meeting because I think we kind of need to get going on some of this. So, thanks, John. All right, is that thanks, Patrick? Reasonable. And yeah, let's see if we if we, if we think you know I don't want to take Michael's suggestion that we not do this. Off. I mean, John, John, whittle it down. Yeah, less we'll words, down, bigger yeah. fonts. Okay. I mean, we yeah. we basically actually to be honest, we have to do something. We've we've yeah. we've committed to the select board and the community as a as contingent. The, the marketing grant for this year was contingent on that, whether that yeah. was the right decision or not. Yeah. We we so okay. All right. Uh, are there any are there any other issues to be discussed? Hearing none. Is there a motion to adjourn? Three minutes early. I want to point out. Oh. <laughs> Michael, seconded by Patrick. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we are adjourned. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks everybody. everybody. Hey, John. Good night. Yeah. Uh, can you call me tomorrow? I got a couple of thoughts on how we can cut some of this back and for okay. the community stuff as well as for the visitor stuff. Uh, okay. It would be a real simple solution. Tell Marion the community stuff and tell me the rest. I'll, I'll give you a call. Tomorrow. Sure. Yeah, give me a call. Definitely. The community yeah. one can just use every door direct mail. Send us send a survey out to everybody. with very inexpensive, and uh, uh, everyone in Woodstock will get it. I love that. All right, let, let's talk about it in the next couple of days, Patrick. Yep. No worries. Just give me a shout. Thanks. All right. Thank you, guys. Take care.